This is Andrew Smiley, Executive Director of TreeFolks. I'm proud to say that this video is brought to you by the Central Texas Regional Mobility Authority, delivering innovative multimodal transportation solutions by engaging the communities we serve and protecting the environment we all share. To learn more, please visit mobilityauthority.com. Here is an Anacacho orchid tree. Now this one's still pretty small and young, but they will get larger. Uh, these trees have really interesting leaves. They are heavily lobed, so they almost look compound. These trees also have little white flowers that show up in late spring. Uh, the bark is a uh, light kind of silvery gray. Uh, the trees themselves stay relatively small, so they're great for small spots. They are really tolerant of shade. Uh, they are great for pollinators. Moths really like the big white orchid-like flowers. And they're just really great understory trees for Central Texas. Again, that's the Anacacho orchid tree. So right here I have a pretty good specimen that I actually helped plant about four years ago. Uh, desert willows are small trees. They usually cap out at about 25 feet. They obviously are very airy, have a lot of space between their branches, and they have kind of thin, long uh, green leaves. So I'm gonna try to get a closer up right here. There we go. So there are some of the leaves, hence kind of the willow name, even though it's not a true willow. Um, so here the bark is kind of smooth, but you know, got that gray and white spots. So this tree usually occurs in West Texas with, you know, dry gravelly soil. It can be in dry stream beds, but it does not like a ton of water. It is incredibly hardy, incredibly drought tolerant. They also have some beautiful showy flowers. So I hope you enjoyed the desert willow. Um, one of its nicknames is Bubba. <laughs> so glad you got to meet Bubba today. So here is a Texas persimmon tree. Uh, these are small fruit trees, uh, native to central Texas. They have nice small fuzzy leaves that sometimes get marred by these warty protrusions caused by a Texas persimmon mite. It's just cosmetic, so it doesn't hurt the tree. This one is female, so it will get uh, black gumball-sized persimmons that are edible that hang out of the tree in late summer. Uh, they have really pretty bark that's silvery and tends to flake off of the tree to reveal lighter colored underbark. These are really great trees for wildlife because they really, really enjoy all of the products that this tree makes. Uh, it's great for pollinators because of the flowers in the spring. And these are great trees for small tight spots in the shade uh, or underplanting other larger trees because they're really, really tolerant of shade. They grow really slowly and they're very small, mannerly trees. <music> This is a Texas mountain laurel. They have really dark green, evergreen leaves that are compound and have multiple leaflets, pinnately arranged, so kind of like a feather. Uh, these are beans, so they do nitrify the soil around them. They also have really bright purple flowers in the spring that are followed by these pretty kind of woody seed pods. The bark is really dark and furrowed and quite attractive. These are really great trees for underplanting for small spots. They generally don't get very large. This is a very large size one right here. It's about 12 feet tall. So I have a pretty nice little pecan right here. Another one right over there. Pecans can reach a max height of about 120 feet, so obviously this one is smaller than that. Um, they tend to be smaller when they're planted closely to other trees, um, but when they have space to grow, they can get quite large. So pecans have a nice grooved bark, as you can see here. I'm gonna zoom in a little closer. 
um, deeply grooved, really pretty. When they're younger, they tend to have a more smooth bark. Um, so it tends to get rougher as the uh, limbs or trunk age. So let's talk about pecan leaves. So here I have a single leaf of a pecan and each little section is called a leaflet. So they usually have a point at the edge and have um, some tooth edges as well. Um, they usually also have one single leaf at the tip. So that's a great way to identify a pecan. Um, they not only are delicious for pies, but they are the state tree of Texas, which is pretty neat. This is a native tree called a ratama. Uh, ratama are great natives because they're super drought tolerant. So their leaves are pinnately compound with a really long central midrib and lots of tiny leaflets. And they can lose all those leaflets and just have that midrib if it's very droughty. And sometimes they'll just lose the leaves entirely and only photosynthesize with the stems. They flower yellow and those flowers are followed by uh, a long bean pod that actually has an edible bean inside of it. Uh, the bark is pretty, it's dark, it's relatively smooth. There are some spines on the branches, but not too many. Ultimately, this tree is really great for pollinators. It's really great for wildlife. Um, it's a relatively medium-sized tree, so it's good for a lot of spots. Uh, this one only has about a 30-foot canopy spread. I highly recommend the Ritama. <laughs>